Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy Hester. Thank you guys so much for your, all your kind comments about me going to every other week with the videos. It's been overwhelming. I've read every single one of them, even though I haven't been able to respond to all of them. I've read all of them, and I thank you. I missed you guys last week, but this week what I want to talk about is something that I asked a bunch of y'all over on Instagram. Is it a topic you'd be interested in knowing about or hearing about? And I got slayed with comments. It was an overwhelming, yes, we want to hear about it. So this week I want to talk to you about creating art when sick. I've noticed over the last year or two that I've been able to create a lot of art when I'm sick, when my energy is low, and even when I'm just like flat out feel like death. And I used to could not do that. So I've been thinking a lot about why is that now I can do that when I used to couldn't do that like at all. So I want to talk about that today, give you some tips and hopefully it will help you when you're sick. As I share my tips and thoughts, I want to share the sketches that I did over a two and a half week time span recently when I was sick. I was actually sick for over a month, but there was two and a half weeks when I just, it was like, I can't do anything. But I did create over 60 sketches and worked in like 11 sketchbooks. <laughs> I was like, what? I would have guessed that maybe I did about 20 sketches, but when I looked through them, I just couldn't believe it. So I wanna share those sketches with you. I'm just going to show them to you. I'm gonna start in the first sketchbook, the day that I was like, oh, I'm feeling like death. And I just sat and painted for hours, maybe even just all day. So I'm gonna just start, I'm not gonna do them in the correct time frame. I'm just going to go from one sketchbook to the next. And then when I finish those sketchbooks one at a time, I'll do sketchbook tours later and tell you more about the sketches. In this video, I'm just going to show you the sketches as I give you my tips for creating art when sick. I am sitting here editing this week's video and I wanted to let you know in case you're not interested at all in listening to any of the sick talk, like how to do art when you're sick, I'm going to have all the like sketchbook tour part. I'll do just a quick one at the end, like a speedy version of it. So you can just go to the end if you're only interested in the sketches. I do hope you're interested in the sketches because I'm really proud of them. Uh, looking over this work, I'm like, I can't believe I created this work while I was so sick. So that'll be at the end. Okay, let's get back to it. I think when talking about creating art when sick, we need to think of it in two different ways, considering two different types of sickness. We have chronic illness and sickness, and then we have the like, something's hit me. I've got the flu, I've got a cold, there's a surgery, I'm down for a short time. So more of like a two or three or month kind of season versus, whoa, I've got, chemo treatments and cancer, and this is gonna go on for a long time, or something that's maybe been going on for years. I wanna address both of those. Some of the tips overlap, but um, I do wanna address kind of chronic, um, I don't have time for some of the tips that you're gonna give, um, and I wanna address that at the very, very end. First, let me address some things to do before you get sick that I think is important if you have the opportunity to do this before you get sick. First off, have a place where all your stuff is. Even if it's just a tiny little corner, a place where you can just easily sit down. Everything's pretty much set up. Maybe you have to fill up a bucket with water, but that's about it, or open a pallet. Something simple. Set up and tear down needs to be simple. So work on that process before you get sick. I think that's really important. I want that even when I'm feeling well. I want to be able to get in and get out quickly. So get that process and that area ready beforehand. I also think it's really important to know your materials. So maybe you haven't been sketching or painting in a while and you're not as familiar with your colors, maybe in your watercolor palette or if you paint in acrylic or your color pencils. For me, knowing my materials is key. Like I don't have to stumble around with my colors. There's something I know like piano keys, right? You know the chords or whatever. I'm not a musician, so I don't really know. It's probably not a real good example, but I don't have to work hard mentally or physically to know color mixes or what my color pencils are. Like I know those things, so that's easy. 
So stay familiar with your supplies and materials. Number three, I think this is probably the biggest key for me of why now I'm able to create when I'm not feeling good. Create regularly. Keep your tools, I use that, that phrase a lot, your tools sharp. So that's knowing your materials. It's knowing the piano keys, right? So I don't have to uncover the piano. I don't have to get the music sheets out. I don't have to remind myself what are those keys and the, how does the foot thing work? I don't even have to get the sheet music out, right? I just can sit down and play. I mean, I can't play the piano, but I can use my supplies. So because I'm creating regularly when I do feel good, it's very easy to create when I'm not feeling good. I think that has been the biggest key and I think that's why years ago I couldn't uh, create when I was sick because I would just kind of go in these spurts. I would go weeks, maybe months without creating. And I think that was also why it was hard sometimes when I would try to get back to creating. It was kind of like, uh, what do I paint? What do I use? What are the subjects I like? It just feels so, rrr. if I even go a few days without, doing any kind of art right now, I still feel like that. I feel a little all combobulated. So for me, because my tools are sharp, I can sit down, play the piano easily. I can lean into the other tips I'm gonna give you even easier. It just, I can get into some effortless sketching because my tools are sharp. So I think that's really important to, to have a momentum, keep that momentum up of creating. Okay, so what if you're like, but Sandy, I'm already sick. Like I'm sick right now those things don't really help. I don't have a place. I don't really have my tool sharp. What should I do? First off, I think the biggest thing is don't put pressure on yourself. Let's do low key, non-pressure kind of sketching or creating art. Low key, no pressure. We just want to enjoy the pencil going across the page or the brush. That's it. We want to just enjoy the process of whatever. That's it. Number two, low expectations, or even better, no expectations of making good art. That's not the point at this point in time when you're sick, is to make sellable, amazing work. We just want to pass the time. We want our mind to be taken off of our body aching or hurting or whatever. That's what that time is about. Going someplace else mentally, not passing the time just on the television or whatever, to get up, move the body a little bit and keep those tools sharp and just pass time. Creativity takes so much mental energy that I think it's a lot like or can be even better than pain meds because I don't know, your, your brain just goes someplace and doesn't even really think about your body. At least that's how it is for me. Even when I'm like feeling good, I'll get up from sketching and I'm like, oh, I wasn't thinking about my body at all. And I should have been, I should have been doing some stretching or taking a break. I think that's one of the wonderful things about creativity and doing art when you're sick is that the time just, it can fly. It's just a great time passing activity and it can get us up and moving just a little bit, but it's also just so enjoyable. Number three, soak up creativity. Get your creativity straw and let's soak it up. So magazines, books, videos, classes, Patreon, things like that. Photos is another one. So I have creative photos in different places on my computer. If I see something inspiring, I'll do a screenshot and have an inspiration folder. Instagram, I have saved things. Pinterest, all of that. Like I have places where I have just eyeball happiness, soaking up creativity places where I can just sip on creativity. Here's the key though. As soon as you feel a little tickle of inspiration, a little itch of creativity, you're watching a video, an art video, and it's kind of like, ooh, that does look fun. Stop the video, put the book down and go immediately right then. I mean, don't wait a second because it will flee. Get up and go sketch right then. Like that's the key. That is the key to it. Soak up. And then as soon as you feel like, Ooh, maybe I feel like I am getting a little energy. That does look fun. Go do it because it's so worth it. But if you let that pass, then you just sit and absorb and absorb. And at some point it's not even helpful because you're just doing like what you would if you were to watch TV. You're just passing the time 
and not allowing the soaking up create of creativity to do what it's supposed to do, like inspire you to go create for yourself. There were two times in this month of sickness that I did not listen to my own rules. I was watching something, I think a Patreon. I was not feeling good at all. And there was just a little, little itch of, that does look fun. And I just kept looking over at my desk where I have all my stuff set up. I'd look over and I'd think, I really should go over there. It's like three steps from where I'm sitting, right? I just thought, no, I'm gonna just sit here and just keep watching. This is probably how I looked and felt. And then, you know, 10 more minutes later, I, I'd look over and think, I really should get and go over there. I did that like three times and finally I thought, Sandy, I know if you will just get over there, push pause and get over there, so much more time will pass and so much more productivity than just sitting here on my bum watching. Like this isn't even doing anything anymore for me. So I pushed pause, got up over there, and man, I was off to the races after that. It was just like, yes, why didn't I do that the first time? So soak it up and then get out there and do it, okay? I think Patreon's a great resource for that. There's two Patreons that I follow that I love, Emma Carlisle and Sarah Dyer. I'll put both of their links below. But I love it because there'll be like art challenges where they give you the imagery and timed exercises. And those are the kinds of things, man, I'll put that on the recorded sessions of those and follow along. And it just gives me something mindlessly to do, but I'm working and before I know it, I'm off to the races of creativity and enjoying it. So I do think those are really great. I have found Patreon groups to be so helpful in seasons where I'm tired, don't know what to create, just feel like doing something with my color pencil, but I don't know what. I'll pull one of those ladies up and watch their Patreon, pull up a session where we get on Zoom together. I'll do one of the recorded ones. And before I know it, I've done 12 sketches, just like that. And three hours has passed. So fourthly, sit down. For my canvas painting, I do like to stand up a lot, but I found that lately I like to sit down a lot with my sketching. I did have to figure out how to still stay loose while I was sitting down, but man, if I'm sick, I sit down. It saves energy, it helps me just go for a lot longer. So do things like that, practical things. Even if it's just you need to curl up on the couch with a blanket and just have a couple color pencils and maybe sketch what you're watching on TV or something. Those kinds of things just help the time pass so much better than just sitting there watching TV. Okay, let's talk about what to sketch or paint. What do you, what do, you do when you're not feeling good, low energy? I find the best thing, or the first thing that I go to is familiar, familiar subjects, subjects that feel so easy to me. For me, that's birds. I almost always go back to birds. In fact, you'll see a lot of birds in these sketches because that's just an easy subject for me. It's a low key subject for me. But secondly, how about do something unfamiliar, something you're not comfortable with. That could be a great season, especially if you have like a long season of sickness or recovery from surgery. Maybe that's the perfect time to take on like landscape or figures and do some YouTube searches to find some how to's and Take time to do some low key. This isn't gonna be great, but I just wanna learn this subject and use a season of being laid up on the couch or in the hospital to do that. Speaking of being laid up in the hospital or on the couch, number three, draw what's around you. If you are in the hospital or on the couch, draw the things that are around you. I think you'll be surprised at how fun it is to draw simple, ordinary, things. Break everything down into simple shapes, square, circle, triangle, rectangle, and just draw what's around you. Maybe the first time you do it, you're like, well, that didn't turn out very good. Well, do it again and then do it again. You're going to be there for a long time. I promise you, you will at the end of that season, doing it over and over and over, get good at it. Maybe do it in a different material. Maybe the first time, just do it in a pencil, then a pen, then get your color pencils out or markers or watercolor and tackle that surrounding. Or if you've got a window that you can see out of, sketch what's out that. And maybe it's not very interesting. We'll tackle it. Do it again and again and again. And I think you'll find that you grow as you do that subject over and over. I've had a lot of foot surgeries over the years where I am laid up for weeks 
on the couch and not just on the couch, but where I have to have like my foot propped up above my heart. So I'm even in like a weird position on the couch. It's not even easy to like draw and I've just made it work. I'll usually have to prop it on a, my sketchbook on like a pillow and it's just nothing about it is comfortable. But I have so many sketches where like my foot is up in the air and then I just go from like, I can see the door, um, here's my foot and then I just, draw everything that's around it, make notes about that time. It makes me smile every time when I get to one of those sketches in my sketchbooks, cause I'm like, oh yeah. And it just feels so, I don't know. It's nice to have memories of that and seeing me making use of that time and growing in my skills of drawing. Lots of those sketches also are of my den, but my little TV tray with all my stuff. I always have this TV tray with like my medicines and my water and book and, all the things and that's always in there and I've always sketched all the things that's on it and I don't know I just love those sketches sketch what's around you and make the most of it the other thing you can do is sketch the people around you maybe the nurses or doctors that come in your room or your family member that's sitting with you they're either in the hospital or in your room you know if you're on the couch all day and you've got a family member that's there for a couple hours watching TV with you sketch them or maybe they fall asleep and take a nap perfect still subject for you there's they're nice and still maybe they're like this but it's still fun to use them and take that time to practice sketching a person and just do it over and over and over i do that a lot too poor grady i sketch him badly so many times this last one is my absolute favorite thing to do well birds are probably my first thing when i'm sick but my next thing that i go to are sketching from my sketches it's just so easy because i've been out you know i've been out painting landscapes well now i can use those sketches sit on the couch or in the chair and pull those out maybe i've used a paint well now I'll use my color pencils and try to you know sketch from those sketches. It just kind of opens up a huge door of subjects and tackling it with different mediums. So that's another thing I do all the time. It's just easy to put a few sketches in front of me and observe from those and sketch. What about for those of you that are in chronic illness, you're in a season where it's like, I don't have a place set up, Sandy. I don't have any of my tools sharp. I don't know my materials anymore, but I do want to do what you're suggesting. Okay, here is what I recommend. Keep it low, low key. Grab your materials, maybe your watercolor that is dried up to no end. It is like cracking and almost falling out of the tin. Wet that baby and do color swatches. Get your color pencils and do swatches. See if you have, it's a great time to like get your materials in order. Do you have too many oranges that are all similar? In fact, I was doing this while I was sick too. Went through all my color pencils, trying to narrow things down. I had like three of this one orangish kind of color that I was like, I do not need all three of these, but there were three different brands. So I was like closing my eyes and trying to see which one I liked the feel of. And it was just fun. I passed a couple hours by doing this, going through my markers, going through my color pencils. If you're doing color swatches of your watercolors or your gouache, play around with color. Maybe you've forgotten how to mix color. Well, do that. Just get some paper, a sketchbook out and do color swatches. Keep it low key. Enjoy just that pencil going across the page or that brush. The other thing you could do is practice your color mixes. This is my example. Let's say you're in the room, you're laid up on the couch and you've got a limited amount of color pencils. So maybe you look at the couch and you go, I don't have that exact blue. What do I have in here? What would I use for that? And maybe just make a color swatch in the area on your, your paper of where that couch would be. Block it in and then take another area. What would those curtains be? What do I have that I could kind of, it's a warmish color. I don't have that red. I don't have that burgundy color. Well, I do have this orangish color. Block it in. And then later you can even like take a darker pencil and try drawing in those shapes. They don't have to be like that that couch color can be outside the lines a little. It's just kind of a neat way to practice looking at a color, trying to figure it out. Or if you have your paints, try mixing that color. What color is that couch? Can I make color swatches and just figure out 
how to get that color. Those kinds of things pass time quickly. They keep tools sharp. They're working on your skills and it's just fun. I think the hardest part is to just do it. Get up or have somebody go get it for you and do it. Set up a little TV tray with your supplies. At least for me, the hardest part is the, I may have the desire, but then just something about that little bit of energy it takes to go get the stuff and actually start feels the hardest. But if you can just do it, I promise you, once you get going, it'll be fun and time will just go, go, go. And then you may find the next day that it feels a little hard too to get started. But just remember, oh yeah, when I got started, it was so fun. In seasons of sickness or lots of doctor's appointments, I try to make the most of not only the time laid up either in the hospital or on the couch, but in the doctor's office, I always have something I can sketch with. It just makes the time go by so much faster. I'm seeing people and things that maybe I normally wouldn't. I mean, even when I'm in the little room, there's always interesting shapes or posters. I've got this one eye doc poster when I was at the eye doctor and it was like the detailedness of the eye and I crack up every time I look at that sketch because it's, it's really bad but it's also just funny but I remember my eyes were getting dilated so everything was getting fuzzy and I couldn't see the page and to get the doctor to come in quicker you get your sketchbook out and they're out in no time it works every single time the other day we were, we were at the doctor's office for like forever I didn't think it was going to be a long wait and it was and at some point I go great you want me to get the sketchbook out he goes yeah that's a good idea <laughs> I got it out and sure enough they called us back like immediately if you are in a season of real sickness especially if it's chronic and long I am so sorry I do hope that these tips help and inspire and encourage and help pass the time and help make the time useful and joyful or a little more joyful. That's what my hope is. And if you're not in a time of sickness, I don't even know if you've watched this video, but if you have, I hope it encourages you and um, informs you for the next time that you're sick. I hope it gives you some tips for that season too. I just came out of a very long season of viruses and sickness and I can't believe how much art I created in that time. And it felt really like a gift to be sick and to be able to just sit and pass the time with something that I love. It really, really felt like a gift. Creativity feels like a gift to me anyways, but to be able to do something besides just veg out and watch TV or watch YouTube, it just felt so nice to make work. Some of it was really good and some of it wasn't, and I just don't care. It was just fun. Bad art, good art, it didn't matter. It just was so nice to create and to be able to do something that felt productive and fun and life-giving in a season that felt low energy and not fun at all. So I do hope it was helpful and that's it for this week and I will see you back here in two. Bye guys. I'm going to start with the sketches in the sketchbook that I think that I started with the day that I realized I was sick. I sat down and just did a ton of sketches and I'm not going to go in order. I'm just going to go from one sketchbook to another and in another video when I actually finish these sketchbooks I will do more of a sketchbook tour and tell you about these sketches. But for right now I'm just going to do a flip. You're going to see several birds. That's an easy subject for me and I go back to it over and over when I need low key sketching, but especially when I'm sick. This is one I did not finish. I was gonna put more birds on this and didn't come back to it. So sometimes that happens when you're sick, you don't finish stuff. Don't feel the oomph to finish it. 